everybody and welcome back to Rocco Baby Crochet. This week's tutorial I'm going to be making another chocolate orange cover but in the shape of these cute gorgeous little elf hats. So the loads are fun to make, they don't take much time at all. I've attached some jingle bells onto them so it feels ever so Christmassy. I really love it. So just so you know that there are plenty more Christmas patterns coming up as well as I've still got that blanket that I'm going to be sharing with you really soon. So don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, hit your bell for notifications so you don't miss out on the free patterns. So the tutorials are all going to be supported by a free written pattern which will be available over on the blog. So there's a little link to that in the description of this video. So let's get into what we need to make these gorgeous chocolate orange covers. everything that you're going to need to make one of these elf hats so I've used the King Cole Glitz range it's what I had left over from doing the Christmas stockings the mini ones that we made an advent calendar with and um, so the red is cherry the green is called Christmas green you're also going to need a four millimeter crochet hook some of these bells if you choose to add them um, but if you don't want to add the bells, they look equally as cute with just a pom-pom on the end. I love shaking them. <laughs> I'm so obsessed. Um, but these are really inexpensive. I got mine off Amazon and I got some silver and gold ones. And they measure 10 millimeters in diameter if you want the same ones as me. So 10 millimeters or one centimeter. You're also going to need a darning needle, a pair of scissors and a stitch marker will come in handy if you're new to crochet. So let's get into making our elf hats. So to begin your chocolate orange cover, if you grab the colour of yarn that you want to start with, so the top of my hat is going to be red, and we want to make a magic ring. But it's just a little bit important that you leave around 5 inches of loose end here, because we use this loose end to secure the bell on the top of the hat when we come to finish off the project. So you make your magic ring by wrapping the yarn around your fingers making the letter X and bring it straight down. Turn your fingers over and you've got two parallel lines of yarn. Pop your hook underneath this first one and grab onto the second strand of yarn. Pull it underneath. Twist your hook upwards and grab back onto that same strand of yarn and pull it through. And that's how we make a magic ring. So when we work around the magic ring, you want to make sure that the loose end is towards the left of you and when you pull on it, the magic ring will get smaller. When you work your stitches around the magic ring, it's important that you work your stitches around both the magic ring and the loose end. So when you pull it together at the end of the round, it all comes together nice and neat. So for round one, we just need to place four double crochets into this magic ring. Now I use English terminology and I'll be using English terminology throughout this tutorial. But if you use US terminology, um, the double crochet is known as a single crochet. So I insert my hook into that magic ring and underneath my loose end, grab onto the yarn and pull up a loop. You'll have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through both loops and that's how we do the double crochet so we need four of them for round one so that's one two three and four so if you pull on your loose end it pulls it all together and what you want to do is slip stitch to the very first stitch that you made for round one. Now this can be a little bit fiddly. In fact, the whole beginning of this project, because it's so small, can be a little bit fiddly to do. But once you're past about row four, it's not too, too bad. So you yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. 
So for round two, this is an increasing round. So we chain one to begin, and then we're gonna place a double crochet increase into the same stitch. So right underneath where your chain one is coming out of, you can see that little hole there, that's where you're gonna place your double crochet increase. So we're gonna pop two double crochets into here. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through them both. And then go back into the same stitch and place your second double crochet. Then into the next stitch, you're just gonna place one double crochet. And then the next stitch along, you're gonna place another double crochet increase. So we're gonna pop two into that one and two and then into the last stitch we're just going to place one double crochet we're going to slip stitch it together to join it into that first stitch don't forget to use stitch markers if you're new to crochet and you find it difficult um, to identify your first stitch. Sometimes they can get lost a little bit in the first stitch or the chain one, so use stitch markers if you're a little bit unsure. Slip stitch that closed. And then for round three, you're gonna chain one, and we're just gonna place one double crochet in every stitch around, and you'll have a total of six stitches. So one, two, five and this is the last one and six and then you're just going to slip stitch it again to the first stitch of the round so insert your hook just underneath that first stitch of the round and slip stitch to close so for round four we've got another increase in round so we chain one and then into this first stitch you're going to place a double crochet increase so two double crochets into that first stitch and then one double crochet into the next two stitches one and two and then your next stitch along is going to be another increase so you're going to place two double crochets into there one and two and then one double crochet into the last two stitches one and two for a total of eight stitches and then you slip stitch to the first top of the first double crochet of the round just to join it all together so for round five we're going to chain one and we're going to place one double crochet in every stitch around for a total of eight stitches so that's one two three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So I change the colours every five rounds. So you're going to want your second colour handy now and I insert my hook as I would normally do to slip stitch this round closed but then I will drop the red now when you're using more than one color it's 
the way that I like to change the colours is I'll drop one colour to the front throughout the whole of the project and I'll drop one colour to the back throughout the whole of the project. If you drop them both to the back all the time, your your yarn ends up ravelling around it itself and you're getting a little bit of a knot. So that's what I do to prevent that from happening. I'll just grab my green. So I finish off the slip stitch by popping the green over my hook and pulling through and pull through just like you would in a normal slip stitch and then I can put that red to the back and then it won't the two strands of yarn never get tangled up so for round six to begin with you're going to chain one and what I like to do is I like to crochet around this loose end of green so that it saves me a job having to weave in ends at the end of the project and round six is an increase in rounds. So in this very first stitch here, we're going to place a double crochet increase. So we're going to pop two in there. One. And two. And then into the next three stitches along, we're just going to place one double crochet. So one. two and three and into the next stitch we're going to place a double crochet increase so we're going to pop two into this stitch one and two and then into the last three stitches we're just going to place one double crochet one two and three so I'll slip stitch to the top of this stitch first stitch of the round starts to get a little bit less fiddly now that it's getting a little bit bigger it's um, definitely a little bit fiddly the beginning of this project but it's so worth it because they're so cute so for round seven, we're just going to do one double crochet into each stitch around. So chain once first of all, and then one double crochet in every stitch. And you should have a stitch count of 10 at the end of this round. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten perfect so we're going to slip stitch to join that to the first stitch again of the round so inserting my hook underneath the top of the first double crochet and slip stitch that to join so moving on to round eight round eight is an increasing round so we're going to begin by chaining one and into the first stitch we're going to place a double crochet increase so two double crochets into that first stitch followed by one double crochet into the next four stitches so one two three and four into the next stitch along is a double crochet increase so you're going to place two double crochets into there one and two and then into the last four stitches you're just going to place one double crochet into each of those so one 
two. three and four. Slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet just to close your round off so for row nine we are just going to chain one and place one double crochet in every stitch around and you'll have a total stitch count of 12 stitches so if you want to hit pause and come back to me when you've got your 12 double crochets and I'll meet you back for row 10. Okay so I've just finished my 12 double crochets. I'm going to slip stitch to this first stitch to join to chain one and round 10 is an increase in round so into this first stitch we're going to place a double crochet increase so two double crochets in that first stitch followed by one double crochet in the next five stitches one two three four and five and then the next stitch is double crochet increase so we're placing two double crochets into that next stitch one and two and then one double crochet into the last five stitches one two three four and five so this is round 10 so I'm going to want to change the colour so I'll just start my slip stitch off by inserting my hook underneath that very first stitch of the round then I'll drop my green towards the back and pick up my red and finish off that slip stitch make sure you don't pull too tight on this red yarn because obviously it's just loosely going up the inside of the hat so you don't want it pulling it out of shape at all so for round 11 what you're going to do is chain one so tighten that green up a little bit just by pulling on it and then we're just going to place one double crochet in every stitch around for a total of 14 stitches so if you want to go ahead and make your 14 double crochets and come back to me when you finish this round so place one double crochet in every stitch around for a total of 14 stitches and when you've got to that point if you come back to me we'll move up to round 12 together so I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first stitch to join round 11 together I'm going to chain one and round 12 is an increasing round again so into this first stitch I'm going to place two double crochets one and two two and into the next six stitches I'm going to place one double crochet into each of those one two just grab more yarn three four five and six and then the next stitch is going to be an increase so we're going to place two double crochets into that stitch one and two and then one double crochet into the last six stitches and you'll have a total stitch count of 16 stitches at the end of round 12 two three four five and six so slip stitch to your first double crochet to join 
and chain one. Round 13 is another is another increasing round. So into this first stitch you're going to place two double crochets, one and two, and into the next seven stitches you're going to place one double crochet. And your stitch count for this row will be 18. One. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So now it's my increase. So I'm going to place two double crochets into this next one and one double crochet into each of the left. Le last seven stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Slip stitch to my first double crochet to join. And for round 14, it's another increasing round. So we're going to chain one and place our increase in the first stitch. So two double crochets into that first stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next eight stitches. And your stitch count for this round will be a total of 20 stitches. One. two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So then place my increase in the next stitch. So two double crochets into that one, one, and two, followed by one double crochet in each of the last st eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Slip stitch to the top of that first stitch just to join and then round 18 is one double crochet in every stitch around for a total of 20 stitches. So I'll let you work round 15 on your own and when you've done your 20 double crochets if you come back to me and we'll move up to round 16 together. So if you hit pause now. So round 16 is going to be um, in the green colour. So I'm just going to insert my hook underneath that first stitch of the round to join it. Drop my red to the front if you remember. Red at the front. And then pick up the green I'm just moving my loose end out the way and complete that slip stitch with the green and pull through. Then the red can go towards the back and out of your way. So chain one to begin round 16. So this first stitch of round 16 is going to be an increasing stitch. So we're going to place two stitches two double crochets into there, one and two and then one double crochet in the next nine stitches, one, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So my next stitch is my increase. So I'm going to pop two double crochets into there. One and two. And then into my last nine stitches, one double crochet into each of those. One, two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Slip stitch to the top of your first stitch. and chain one. So for round 17 this is going to be another increasing round so we're going to place two double crochets into this first stitch one and two and then we're going to place one double crochet in the next ten stitches One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and 10. Then a double crochet increase in the next stitch so we're going to place two in there, one and two and then one double crochet in the last 10 stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Slip stitch to your first stitch again to join and chain one. So round 18 is another increasing round so we're going to do a double crochet increase into our first stitch one and two and then one double crochet in the next 11 stitches one two three four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and eleven and then a double crochet increase into this next stitch one and two and one double crochet into each of the last 11 stitches. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten, and eleven. Slip stitch to your first stitch just to join. And chain one. So round 19 is going to be another increasing round. So we're going to do a double crochet increase in this first stitch followed by one double crochet in the next 12 stitches. One, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Double crochet increase into your next stitch. So place two double crochets in the same stitch and then one double crochet into the next twelve stitches. And your stitch count for this round is going to be a stitch count of 28. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Slip stitch to the first double crochet to join. And chain one. So for round 20, we're just going to place one double crochet in every stitch around for a total of 26, sorry, for a total of 28 stitches. So if you want to make your way around and meet me back here when you're coming towards the end of round 20 and we'll move up to row 21 together. So if you hit pause now. So I've just done my 28 double crochets and I'm going to slip stitch it to the very first stitch of round 20 to join but I'm going to drop the green and pick up the red so drop the green towards the back and pick up the red I'm just going to pop my loose end down there now because I don't need that anymore for the moment pick up your red and complete the slip stitch with the red. Pull on the green just to tighten up that stitch a little bit and chain one. So for round 21 we're going to do an increase into this first stitch followed by one double crochet into the next 13 stitches. So two double crochets in the first stitch followed by one double crochet into the next 13 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen. So then I'm going to place another double crochet increase into this next stitch here, followed by one double crochet in the last thirteen stitches. 
and you'll have in total a stitch count of 30 for row 21. So next stitch is your increase, so place two double crochets into that one and then one double crochet in every stitch that's left and you should have 13 of those. So I'll let you do that. If you want to hit pause and come back to me when you are ready to go up to round 22. Okay, so I'm just going to finish off round 21. So I'm going to slip stitch to the very first double crochet of the round. Chain one and round 22. Um, we're just going to place one double crochet in every stitch around for a total stitch count of 30. So if you want to make your way around for round 22 and place one double crochet in every stitch for a total of 30 stitches and meet me back here when you're ready to go up to round 23. Okay, so I've done my 30 double crochets and I'm going to just slip stitch to the very first stitch of the round just to complete it. And chain one. So for round 23, this is an increase in round, so into this first stitch here, I'm just going to place two double crochets, one and two and I'm going to place one double crochet in each of the next 14 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. So into the next stitch along, I'm going to place my double crochet increase. So we're going to pop two into there, one and two, and then one double crochet into the next 14 stitches. So if you want to make your way along and hit pause and come back to me when you're finishing off round 23. Or I'm just going to slip stitch to finish off round 23. Round 24 is another, another increasing round so we're going to place one double crochet increase into this first stitch so one and two followed by one double crochet in the next 15 stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So then I'm going to do another double crochet increase here. So two into the next stitch, followed by one double crochet into the next fifteen stitches. So I'll let you work your way along round 24 and when you're ready to go up to round 25 if you come back to me. Okay so I'm going to slip stitch to join round 24 and chain one. So round 25 this is the last 
a round of increasing that we're going to do and we're just going to do one increase and we're going to do it here at the beginning so we're going to place two double crochets into this first stitch and then we're going to place one double crochet in every stitch around for a total of 33 double crochets um, and in total that will give us a stitch count of 35 so you're going to place one double crochet into the next 33 stitches and if you meet me back when you come to the end of round 25 we'll go up to round 26 together so if you'd like to hit pause now pick up my green slip stitch that drop my red back to the back and chain one so rounds 26 up until round 45 are the same we're just going to be placing one double crochet in every stitch around so you'll chain one and one double crochet in every stitch around and your stitch count should be 35 and don't forget that you'll need to change colors every five rounds and I'll meet you back here when I'm finishing up round 45 and we'll move up to round 46 together just a little bit of advice don't go past 45 because we change how we change our colors at that point so if you work up rows 26 to 45 just placing one double crochet in every stitch around for a total stitch count of 35 you slip stitch to join each round and chain one before you begin the next so I'll see you back in a, in a minute or so once you're at round 45. So I've just finished up row 45. I just need to slip stitch it to join it. I just wanted to show you what it should be looking like at this point. So I'm going to move up to row 46 now. So when we slip stitch to join this round, row 46 is just going to be using the front loops of the hat so to slip stitch to join you just pop your hook underneath the, the front loop only and slip stitch it chain one and place a double crochet just back underneath and around the front loop only then move on to your next stitch and you're doing a front loop only double crochet and you're going to do that all the way around for a total of 35 front loop only double crochets. So if you work your way around for row 46 and then I'll meet you back when you're ready to go up to row 47 or round 47 should I say. So if you hit pause now and come back to me when you're at that point. Okay, so I've just completed my 35 front loop only double crochets and I'm going to slip stitch to the first one just how we normally would. I'm going back underneath both the loops that make the up the top of the stitch and slip stitching just to join round 46 so round 47 48 and 49 you're just going to be placing chaining one and placing one double crochet in every stitch around again you'll have a stitch count of 35 so I'll let you go ahead and make rows 47 48 and 49 and if you come back to me when you're finishing up row 49 and I'll show you how we just finish off the edging for the hat and do the little points and attach the jingle bells so press pause now and come back to me when you're finishing up row 49 Okay, so I'm at the end of row 49 and I'm just going to slip stitch it to the top of the very first double crochet just to join the round. And then into the next stitch along, so we're not popping anything into this first stitch where we have been 
starting our previous rounds into the second stitch along so here we're going to place three treble crochets so I'm using UK terminology in US terminology these are double crochets so let me just zoom in a little bit onto this for you so you're going to yarn over working into this stitch here insert your hook Yarn over, pull up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And then back into the same stitch and repeat that. And then into it for a third time and place your third treble crochet. Slip stitch into the next stitch. And then you're going to skip two stitches and slip stitch into the third. Into the next stitch along you're going to place three treble crochets. One. Two. And three and then slip stitch it into your next stitch along skip two stitches and slip stitch into your third stitch next stitch you're going to place your three treble crochets one two and three next stitch along you're going to make a slip stitch skip two stitches slip stitch into the third and then three treble crochets into your next stitch one two and three slip stitch into the next stitch along skip two one two slip stitch into the third stitch one two three treble crochets into the next stitch one, two, three, slip stitch into the next, skip two, one, two, slip stitch into the third, then three treble crochets into the next stitch one two and three slip stitch into the next stitch skip two stitches and slip stitch into the third just repeating this all the way around now then three treble crochets one two and three slip stitch into the next stitch and then you should have um, just two stitches left and just slip stitch back into that last stitch chain one and then you want to cut off um, around around 10 to 12 inches because you're going to use this loose end to sew on the jingle bells so pull up on that chain one hold on to your chain one and pull firmly just to secure that 
knot and then what I like to do at this point is I like to turn it so where we did the front loop only row is where the hat will turn up so I like to turn it up before I sew on the bells and then I'll just attach my darning needle and all I do is I weave this loose end in and out of each stitch all the way along it is actually easier if you have the pointy end facing to you and then when I get to the peak, so the middle of our three treble crochets together, I'll grab a bell. And just thread that through my darning needle. And pull it down. And then just sew that into place. So I'll go around that around three times just to make sure that it's um, firmly attached. So one, two, and three. And then I'll carry on weaving in and out of these stitches until I come to my next set of three treble crochets. And when I'm at the middle one of those three trebles, I'll thread another bell on. And then just attach that on there in exactly the same way. So I like to go through it um, around three times, just so I know that it's nice and secure. That's three, and then move on and work my way across to my next three trebles so if you continue to do that and then I'll meet you back once I've got all my bells attached so if you press pause until you get to that point okay so all my bells are attached and all I'm going to do now is on the inside of it I'm just going to go through just one of the back loops and just knot this loose end off. And then just weave in this loose end under a couple of stitches. Just going through the back loops and then going back up them So wonder the cats haven't come in. <laughs> Every time they've heard these bells jingling, they've been running in. Okay, give it a little stretch. And then you can cut that loose end. So all we need to do now is we want to just turn it inside out because we've got to pop the one 
onto the very top. So I'm just going to thread my darning needle and pop my needle through the very centre of the magic ring that we made at the beginning and pull that through and then attach my bell so thread my bell through there, pop it back this way and then just go back through the centre of the magic ring and pull that through and then turn it back inside out again and then just secure that on so I'm just going to knot that through And then I'm just going to weave in my loose end and that's how I make my elf chocolate orange covers. So just weave in my loose ends, trim that off pop it all back out the right way. It's really hard to get everything through because it's quite a really tight little thing and there we go so all we need to do grab your chocolate orange pop it over the top you have to push down quite firmly because I've made them quite tight so the oranges don't go rolling out of them And there we have it, one little elf chocolate orange cover. So I hope you have loads of fun making these, I really do love making them, they're lots of fun and they're very very festive. So leave me a comment if you do make one, don't forget I love seeing pictures of things that you make from the tutorials. Um, so it'd be great to see any of those over on Facebook if you do make them but other than that I will see you all next week with another free pattern and a tutorial so happy hooking folks and I'll see you next week bye